Okay, so let me talk to you about growth arrest, partial bars, and excision of bars. When and how? So uh, Avi has very nicely showed uh, the zones of uh, cartilage. What we need to know is not only the zones of resting cartilage, but the blood supply. Unless you know that there is a disruption of blood supply which infects the physis, you will not realize why the bar forms. It's important as orthopedic surgeons to realize which ones of these injuries which were highlighted causes growth arrest. So a type three injury, look at where it is disrupting. It disrupts the epiphyseal blood supply and goes intra-articular and across the zone of maturing cartilage. So this is likely to cause growth arrest. The next one is type four, where it goes across the joint and disrupts epiphyseal and metaphyseal blood supply and cuts across all the resting cartilage to the maturing cartilage. So type three, type four, Peterson one, which he highlighted is a crushing injury. So you think it's a metaphyseal fracture, but actually the fracture line runs into the physis and that causes a growth arrest. Peterson six, which means missing physis. This is typical of compound fractures. So when you see a missing physis, it's going to be a growth arrest. And then you have peripheral rim injuries, which we will show with clinical examples, which are going to cause eccentric growth arrest. So these are the common types of fractures which are going to end up with growth arrest. When you have a growth arrest, you must first classify it, whether it is a complete growth arrest or it is a partial growth arrest. Complete is where the entire physis stops growing and you will probably end up with a linear shortening. But a partial growth arrest, depending on where it is situated, will cause either articular tenting or coronal plane malalignment or deviation, or it can combine that with shortening. So identifying what kind of growth arrest are you dealing with is very important to make a plan how you are going to tackle it. Now, these, were the, uh, these are the classifications through CT scans and tomograms. If you look in cross section, this is a peripheral growth arrest. This is a central growth arrest. And this is a linear growth arrest as described by Peterson. So all of them will have different consequences. The central growth arrest usually typically will cause pulling down of the articular surface, especially upper tibia, lower fever, with a little shortening. But peripheral growth arrest and linear growth arrest will end up causing angular deformities. So remember, peripheral growth arrests cause angular deformation. A central causes tenting and articular deformation and a patchy or a complete growth arrest ends up with shortening. And every growth arrest, depending on how the damage went through the physis and which blood supply damage give you, will give you combinations of these. Early signs of detecting growth arrest are the Harris growth arrest lines. Now look at this, there has been a transient growth arrest and you can see this density line, but this is perfectly parallel to the physial line, which tells you there was temporary cessation and it has resumed and there is no angular uh, deformity likely to happen or a scar where the Harris line is converging towards, right? So this is just a transient growth arrest which happened and just bent away. Hey, Chingu. Hello. So, Carcel and Wenger bar maps, you can map these bars before you try to do any kind of uh, surgery. So, these were the old way where you did bar, uh, the facial bar mapping using tomograms. And today we have CT scans and MRI, which tells you exactly how far the bar is from the articular surface, from the metaphysis, what is the depth of the bar, what is the quantum of the bar, so that you can adequately make your decisions on what you're going to do. So what are you, what are the determinants of a, a bar excision? So these are the factors which you should look at. What is the age of the child? How old is he? The younger the child, the more deformity and shortening is going to happen. So if you have an older child with a facial bar of whatever kind, there is lesser time to fuse. It's easier to do a definitive osteotomy or facial disease and correction. It also depends on which bone is involved. The fast growing physis like lower femur, upper tibia or upper humerus have the worst prognosis because they have the largest amount of growth. The same kind of a bar, if it is around the elbow or if it is around the proximal uh, uh, part of the uh, distal part of the tibia will have a lesser implication. 
location of the bar again central are central as well as peripheral if they are small and localized can be very well resected 40% and lesser have predictable results 50% and higher you have very unpredictable results and finally what was the nature of arrest it's not only trauma that causes facial bars if it is infection radiation or infarction these etiologies will have very bad prognosis it's better to have a traumatic facial bar rather than an infective facial bar so these are the surgical options available to you you can either complete the growth arrest and deal with only linear shortening or you do an osteotomy with a correction of deformity and bar resection or you can do bar resection and try to do growth modulation or you just lengthen or use combinations of all of the above so we'll just go to some cases to show you what's happening here now in this particular child uh, an ankle an injury which has damaged the outer side of the physical physis of the distal fibula and the tibia and you are seeing that there is a progressive valgus the mri also confirms that there is more than 50% damage and complete damage to the fibular physis so here there is no point in trying to do a resection of the bar this is an indication for completing the epiphyseal disease by removing what is working so what i did was i went in through the medial side and scraped out whatever remaining physis was there and used that as an osteotomy and closed it so i got an acute deformity correction and i got a permanent epiphyseal disease now i can just deal with the distal shortening which is about 3 mm per year not too much and depending on the age i can lengthen him at maturity so simpler options can be used sometimes you have a type 6 injury where you have a compound injury with a run over and loss of skin where you can do epiphyseal disease and soft tissue distraction or lengthening with that to get correction but how do you do bar excision so bar excision depends on three steps one is you have to map the bar as i said second excise the bar completely and third interpose something which will prevent reformation of the bar so this is an example of a 9 year old child who had a fracture shaft femur he was treated in a thomas splint and they didn't realize that he had a distal femoral facial injury so what happened was he developed a progressive flexion deformity initially they thought this is because of the immobilization and femur fracture but his mri showed a posterior facial bar which was causing tenting procurvatum and shortening now this was sufficiently small and sufficiently peripheral to warrant excision so physical dimensions and distance from landmarks were noted second the approach now this is one of the modifications you can take out if you have a central bar you can take out a metaphyseal triangular piece of bone which is pre drilled and approach the central bar through a hole in the metaphysis like this and then repose that fragment and put in a screw so this is an approach just i wanted to highlight for a, a central bar resection through a metaphyseal window for a peripheral bar you don't have to worry you can go with a direct approach remember to excise the periosteum use a high speed burr constant irrigation always remove more than required so that a repeat bar doesn't happen go 2 mm extra on either side and uh, use constant irrigation the third step is when you excise the bar you must have adequate visualization when when you excise the bar the rim of your excision should show healthy facial cartilage now seeing that can be very difficult in presence of bleeding so again copious irrigation you can use dental mirrors or you can use an arthroscope so a small uh, arthroscope can be put in into your uh, entry or exit or the metaphyseal window and then you look all the way around you use a 30 degree scope and look all the way around whether you are seeing nice clean white shiny cartilage which will confirm that you have resected adequately so a dental mirror an arthroscope and a siam are useful tools for proper visualization of your excision so this is an example where the posterior bar was resected and we had good healthy cartilage all around that was the burr that was the siam image and then you have to put in something there what do you put in there 
these are the things those have been uh, described cranioplast adipose tissue from the buttock region apophyseal cartilage from iliac crest some people have tried stem cells or vascular spinal transfers but in the general and average situation fat is good enough so you can put in fat there uh, some people also use cement or cranioplast to prevent uh, reformation of the bar the disadvantage of fat is sometimes when the tourniquet is released it may wash off or flow off so always when you take fat you use a vicryl stitch to anchor it in bone so that it doesn't move away or wash off and finally you put markers so you put a small steel wire up and down so that you know whether the growth resumes so this is the surrogate for the harris uh, growth arrest line you meet a you put a metallic harris line there so that when the child grows or the physis grows you know whether it is growing or not so that is how it happens so this particular case i'll run through this this was the bar resection that is a 7 year follow up so he did not progress in his deformity his length became all right and he did not need any further surgery with a good range of motion now this child assaulta harris two injury in a distal tibia was treated conservatively and after one year they found that there was a deformity and shortening and the mri revealed a central facial bar so there was a central kind of a facial bar which was tenting the physis causing shortening and deformation so what i did was i went in through a metaphyseal osteotomy i did not remove bone but i resected the apex of the bar here as you can see through that osteotomy and then i put in a small mini fixator i interposed fat there we put in a mini fixator that was the amount of bone removed from the physis and corrected the deformity that was a 5 year follow up showing a uh, restoration of growth and maintenance of the uh, articular congruity and that is this girl uh, showing you excellent function and now recently she completed her 12th class and she sent me her photograph she is still maintaining her correction and uh, that is how she is walking now and uh, the result has lasted a long time so a central bar resection which has done quite well so in properly indicated cases bar resection do very well proximal tibia this is to highlight tenting you now you can see here there is a reversal of the tibial intercondylar eminence because of a central facial bar this was resected again through a metaphyseal window i removed the fibula also because it was bothering and overgrowing and use a growth modulation on the lower femur to get my alignment so you can do combination techniques with facial bar resection this lower end radius somebody tried to do open reduction ended up with a facial bar and being enthusiastic 8 year old child i mapped the bar there were two bars here you can see so i resected those bars and i put in markers and i put a distal uh, fibula uh, ulnar epiphyseo dc screw and i waited and monitored the child at 6 months i didn't find any change and at maturity there was hardly any change so what happens is that every time things may not go as you think especially with lower end radius so in fact lower end radius uh, the recent papers have shown that facial bar resections do poorly and in fact the ulnar growth is so rapid that even the screw migrated so getting rid of the ulnar growth is a difficult job and getting the radius to grow is also a difficult job you can neither stop growth nor you can restore growth around the wrist very efficiently so ultimately at maturity i did a lengthening using a linear fixator and got back uh, the variance which was required for appropriate function so now that we have learned our lesson we know that in older children with a facial bar go ahead with an osteotomy and ulnar resection and shortening rather than trying to do a bar resection this is a special area where resection of bar doesn't really work do it for upper end tibia lower end femur lower end tibia works pretty well but lower end radius we really don't know so this was his function this is karal's case who had a peripheral bar now this child was hit by a cricket ball he had an injury here and the mri showed a peripheral teether so a salta harris type 6 injury now this was resected and he put in a cement block there and you did a growth modulation so that is the x ray resection of bar 
growth uh, uh, the pins to monitor growth and a growth modulation device and over a period of time slowly this straightened out and went on to a very good correction over a period of time another example of a 8 year old girl who had a nailing done somewhere and ended up with a peripheral bar a similar kind of an injury now peripheral bars are eminently resectable so here again the same thing what taral did this was the approach a lateral facial bar excision and opposite side hemiapicodesis over a period of time 6 months you can start seeing the correction and in 12 months this was completely restored so these are the things that can be done uh, and these these are taral's uh, x rays again the longer follow up okay so the take home message here for you is that it is important you know which facial injury is going to give you a bar you must diagnose the bar you must quantify it you must monitor the effect of that bar over a year or two years to see what it is doing to the bone is it only shortening is it tenting is it peripheral teethering is it change in articular shape or is it coronal plane malalignment then look at what is the child how much growth is remaining get an mri map it correctly plan an appropriate correction there is a learning curve to it a lot of equipment may be needed like arthroscope light source a um, dental mirror a cm a high speed burr and always follow them up till complete maturity and with mandas permission i am going to show a couple of slides about our ifix 2020 web conference which is coming up so we have 18 international figures who are going to talk about pediatric fractures over four weekends in september so i would urge you to visit ifix.in and register yourself for this fantastic pediatric session thank you very much Thank mm-hmm. you.